I've made lots of buildings and equipment and even had a stab at some plants, but I've realized I haven't made any craters yet. Time to rectify this oversight. First up, let's get some inspiration going. Hmm, the vegetation growing in the middle. I like that. Water pooling up in the center, letting things grow. Life returning after war. I like those grooves and the steep sides. Yeah, definitely the ridges and grooves look really good. Definitely want to do something like that. Or maybe like this. Now here we go. I like this pool of water style. I'll take a look and see what can be used to make a good water effect. And for this one, I like the debris around the edge, the loose rocks. My slate stone will be perfect for this. Right, let's have a quick doodle to get all these ideas together and see what we are aiming for. I'm going to go with raised sides, a steady dip in with the ridges and the grooves and the pool, maybe with skulls and melting body parts. Now if I use that something like Tesseract Green Glow, instead of a more usual brown, green or blue, it could be a, a blast crater that is being turned into a digestive pool, or it's just kind of a death world scenario with lethal acid rains that have collected in this relic of the battlefield artillery exchanges. Sort of like New Earth in Rogue Trooper, a world ravaged by chemical attacks where everything is lethal and toxic from all the poisons. Okay, to materials. I grabbed a sheet of pink insulation foam from Home Depot. It's an inch thick, so it should be perfect for what I have in mind. I sketched out the perimeter of the crater with a sharpie and the inner part, which will be the ridge. Extending my utility knife out all the way, I dragged it around and cut free the crater. Once it was out, holding it at an angle, I sawed around and got the uphill gradient. And once done, I aimed into the middle and sawed around in a circle to excavate the blast pit. Oops, <laughs> went a little deep there and pierced the base. Okay, I'll deal with that later. Nil desperandum! <laughs> Cutting in at an angle on the sides and then from the opposite angle, this cuts out some very nice V-shaped grooves. It's pretty angular though, and not in a good craggy rock face way. I wonder if sandpaper will work on this. Oh, very nice. A fine grit sandpaper is really good at polishing up the insulation foam. I wonder what else will work. How about the heat gun? Let's give it a few waves and wafts of heat and see what happens. Hmm. Not bad, but it's not the look I'm after. Okay, back to carving. The sides look good with kind of water channel smoothed formations, but for the inside, I want more drastic grooves from the detonation. Some signs of this thing being gouged brutally from the land. So a whole bunch of V-shaped cuts radiating out from the middle. Speaking of the middle, time to sort out the results of my somewhat over enthusiastic cutting. I cut out a square of plastic from a bag something arrived in. I applied a full solid circle of superglue around the bottom of the hole and glued the square of plastic into place to get a watertight seal so I can fill up the pool and not have it spill out all over the place because of the breach. On to texture, breaking out the kills primer and grouting sand for a really rugged look that worked very well when I used it for those old derelict bunkers. Pour the primer into a container, grab a measuring cup and add some sand, and with a big fat brush, quickly stir it up and then start dabbing it all over the sides of the craters. Working fast because this stuff stodges up quick. Adding more kills is the only real solution to that because water dilutes the mixture. It doesn't pick up the sand as good and when it dries, it tends to crack and flake and that's not really the effect I'm currently seeking. While this is drying, the look the heat gun created has given me inspiration. Not something I want to use on this crater that's drying right now, but maybe something for another smaller crater. So, I cut out a smaller disc of foam and then started creating a steeper hillside and then cut out the crater and then carved in a bunch of grooves radiating out from the middle and this time I didn't pierce the lowest point of the crater. And then a dose of the sandpaper to smooth out the edges where my, I looked this up, my ejector blanket will be. 
and then a steady low heat blast of the heat gun straight into the crater to cause the foam to melt a little and shrivel up because this impact was from a plasma weapon or a multi-melter or some other incredibly hot blast effect. Then a quick sarnie to shut my growling stomach up so I can work in peace and right back to the sand and the primer dabbing on another nice perimeter with another big dab in the middle. For the big crater this should help seal the hole I made. While these guys dry maybe some accent pieces, some torn up barbed wire perhaps. I recall from history when I was a kid when we were covering the ridiculous pushes to break through in World War I the artillery would pummel the barbed wire to clear a path beforehand, but when the troops arrived, it was all still there, because when you blow up barbed wire, it just falls back down into a tangled mess. It doesn't get ripped up as they intended. So I grabbed my Hildy and Joe 26 gauge silver plated copper wire. I got a nice length, folded it at the middle around the chair leg, stretched it out, bent the other ends over onto themselves a couple of times so my drill bit has something to chomp down on, tightened it up and then a steady twirl to wind up the wire. And once it was all nice and barbed wire looking, I started winding it around a marker pen to get that curled look. I then cut the spool into two pieces, one for each crater. Let's have a quick look, see what we've got. Excellent! Hmm, a little shiny. We'll definitely have to do something about that. Time to add some colour. A quick squirt of black acrylic and a squirt of white and a pour of Mod Podge and stir it all up and then with a big fat brush start dabbing it all over the terrain pieces, making sure to get it in all those numerous nooks and crannies. Once the base coat is dry, time to add my ejector. A quick squirt of Elmer's along the ridges and then sprinkle on some small weld slate and stone 1 8 inch gravel. And then the same on the smaller crater. While this dries, I grab some tweezers to snag the wire and then with some watered down black paint, I daubed it over the wire. So the watery mixture settles in the spirals while taking the shine off the rest of it. Okay, looking a lot more battlefield weathered and pummeled. On to dry brushing. A quick squirt of white acrylic into the Mod Podge mixture, stir it up and then start with a dry brush over the whole thing. Not too shabby. Another squirt of white and a more delicate dry brush to accent the more drastic features. And then a final near white dry brush touch along the perimeter and the ridge line and on a few other spots. Oh hell yeah, looking nice and craggy indeed. Continuing the accenting, some quarter inch blocks of slate stone, super glued on the ridge line. Then some army painter black, watered down, and then dabbed onto some of the areas of eighth inch to create some scorched areas, places where flame rolled out and left some patches of soot. On to the gore, some chunks of dried latex to be the basic dissolving tissue, Actually, the pool will take a while because you are supposed to leave it to dry for ages between application. So let's get going with that. I got some Vallejo water texture acrylic, a squirt into a sealable container, and I added a generous measure of Tesseract green. This will be the opaque depths of the pool. A steady pour into the middle and then I rolled it around a little so it wasn't just collecting up at the edges but was more spread out, like water lapping at a shoreline or beach. Now, I added a skull and using a nail dipped it into some Weldwood contact cement, got a blob and applied it around the skull. I blew on the blobs to harden them and stop them running and then once I left them to almost dry solid, at which point I started dipping the nail into the glue so I can stretch out strands to the surrounding area and make some nice gory texture effects. Kind of got a little over the top on it so I added some more skulls and repeated so there's a bunch of dissolving heads on the side of my crater. Once all this glue was dry I decided that this gore is going to be proper dissolved bleached out, stripped of colour by the acidic goo in the puddle. So I painted it with white scar and added some spatters on the nearby stone. And then to let the water texture dry, which you want to give plenty of time to do so, as this will keep the layers distinct and stop them blending and ruining the effect. 
I am letting the acrylic dry longer than the paint so that when the white is done, a few dabs of the Tesseract to the white to start to get the color going. Once it was dry, I added a squirt of the acrylic into the container, stirred it up so it's a little more translucent, and then added another pour and swirled it around to thin out the edges. If you end up with some bubbles, just use a brush to grab them, drag them aside and pop them. This gets rid of the foam as well if you end up with some. Just drag it to the side and stab it out on the rocks. And then, more waiting. And then add some more acrylic to the mixture and another pour and swirl it around and pop the bubbles and even more waiting. And then I added more of the acrylic water texture to make it even more see-through and this time when swirling I wash it up over the dissolving flesh and pop the bubbles. And then yep, you guessed it. And then with a final squirt that gets it almost straight from the bottle translucent and this starts to submerge the melting flesh which is perfect. This is what I hoped would happen. You can make out some of the skulls and the texture of the meat and as it slides deeper it becomes more and more hidden until it vanishes into the green glow of the depths. And then to let it dry utterly and totally so I gave it 24 hours. 24 hours later. And finally here we are. Wow. That came out way better than I expected. I really thought this would take a few tries to get the technique down, but it's actually very simple. As you add the water texture and pour, more and more of the pigment is getting thrown in and it just naturally fades away. Right, some final touches. Some super glue to fasten my barbed wire in place. I put some kinks in the end to make it look a little less straight off the spool. And then some army painter swamp tufts added all around the sides. The inside is not only still recovering from the blast, but is full of stuff that's melting cadavers, so no plants in there. And here we are, an artillery shell and a plasma blast ripped up the ground, scattering scorched rocks and buffeting some coils of barbed wire with waves of fire. In the aftermath of battle, a weld seared by generations of chemical warfare releases drizzles of acid rain onto the scorched earth and it collects in these craters. Its potency causes the corpses there to melt and dissolve, but not the native plants that have long since hardened themselves to this poisonous environment. What remains of the cadavers devolves into a thick organic slurry, the tissue sliding down the sides of the craters and into the pools, where it drifts down into the murky, lethal depths. <laughs> 